Good morning, church. I've heard some of you, so I'm going to, like I normally do, do that again and say, Good morning, church. I must say, I come here this morning with such a, a full spirit, so expectant, so excited. I started boot camp this week, can you believe it? And it just made me realize how important it is to look after this vessel that God has given us. And I just, I welcome you all to hear the message. I welcome everybody who's online this morning from all corners of our beautiful earth to focus on that that is positive and sort of leave the negativity behind and just be in this moment so that we can actually start our week off on a positive, positive note. So again, I welcome everybody here in the sanctuary and I welcome everybody who's online. This morning, I'm going to read Psalms 119, verses 1 to 8. Blessed are those whose ways are blameless, who walk according to the law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep His statutes and seek Him with all their heart. They do no wrong, but follow His ways. You have laid down precepts that are fully obeyed. Oh, that my ways were steadfast in obeying your decrees then I would, be put, I would not be put to shame when I consider all your commands. I will praise you with an upright heart as I learn your righteous ways. I will obey your decrees. Do not utterly forsake me, O Lord. And so I hand over to our wonderful worship team to lead us in praise and worship. Good morning, everyone. Please will you stand with us. Let's get those hands together. Come on. When night has fallen, when fear is common, still you're calling me. When faith is lost and my hope exhausted, you will be my strength. When my mind says I'm not good enough,
inamandli zula ko na mtano entlezi. Age kungulung kulung afani swana. Age kungulung kulung alengani swana. Noma wechela noma wenyogela. Udu mo look fane. We thank you for being a good, good father. And thank you, Father God, for the knowledge that our hearts are safe with you. Just 
their voices seated in when I'm cleaning, when I'm cleaning, when So, Father, of the grave into your glorious day, Father God, and that whatever trials or tribulations we may be facing, you are there beside us, you are before us, you are behind us, you hold us, you carry us, and we thank you that we are able to gather together today to worship your mighty name. Amen. Please have a seat. I want to extend my welcome to that of Julie's this morning and just say that if there's anybody here joining us for the first time, we do have welcome brochures. It's just speaking to the life of the church, um, what we connect with, how we connect, our social media handles, and just general information. So if you are new to Grace Point or you are joining us for the first time, please join myself or Jean in the foyer after the service and we'll be able to give you one of these brochures and just we'd love to meet with you and connect with you. I want to extend a further invitation. In our second service, we will be having baptisms. Anybody who would like to stay for the baptisms, you're welcome to do so. And after the second service, we will be having a family baptism. When we speak of family, we speak of family coming into the life of the church. Down at the pool, um, we will be having adult baptisms. There are eight people being baptized this morning, and we would love it if you would be able to join us down at the baptism pool after the second service for that occasion. Let us just still our hearts and bow our heads as we come together for the time of the offering. Father God, Thank you for your many blessings. Thank you that even in difficult circumstances, you are our provider. You are the one that holds us. You are the one that carries us. Father God, we come before you this morning with our offerings. However small they may be, we know that they are coming from our heart, Father God, and we lay them before you in recognition of all you are to us. And it is a small and tiny portion of what we can give in relation to the sacrifice of Jesus on the cross for us. Father God, may the people and the custodians of these funds use them wisely for the glorification, the edification of your church and the extension and growth of your kingdom. In Jesus' mighty name, amen.
let's find out what's happening in the life of Grace Point. Parkrun at Grace Point Glenfinness happens every Saturday at 8 a.m. and is enjoyed by many who come to visit and run on the Grace Point property. We do, however, need volunteers to help guide runners and also walkers along the course. If you're interested in seeing this event grow in our community, sign up on the Parkrun page, which you will find on the Grace Point website. We're reaching the end of the year and there's still people in various communities we serve that are struggling with the basic necessities of life, such as food. As a church, we'll be collecting canned food, such as veggies and fruit and more. Please bring a can to church each week as we work together to meet this need. Sunday the 23rd will be a special family service with our next generation involved as part of the service. This will be a lot of fun for the whole family to enjoy an all-age worship service. We look forward to seeing you there. And by the way, don't be late. We don't want anyone to miss out on this wonderful time together as a Grace Point community. Ecclesiastes 3 speaks about a time for everything, a season under the sun, a time where things will transition and change in life. In the same breath, the Gen Art Department will be going into a new season, with both myself and Earls going into new chapters of our lives. 2023 will see myself and my family moving down to Peter Maritzburg as I continue my journey of being trained in ministry. I'll be going as a conference appointed seminarian to Peter Maritzburg Seminary to be trained as a minister in the Methodist Church of Southern Africa. Similar journey, but different technicalities. I'll be joining the seminary as a private student, ultimately studying towards ordination. You, however, may see me from time to time in the congregation as I can still engage. Once, twice a quarter, we'll see how much life allows. And so as much as this may be a sad time for Jen now, and we are sad to say goodbye to Grace Point, we're also looking forward to the new opportunity that this presents to the Jen now community. And we do hope that as the story continues to unfold, you will be there supporting the department as you always have. We look forward to this beautiful story unfolding and showing Grace Point's true potential in reaching kids, teenagers, and young adults. This is truly sad for our community, but we are excited to see Hlonia and Ilza furthering their journey into ministry. However, this does mean Grace Point are now looking for Gen Now leaders to join our team in the new year. If you are interested or know of anyone who specializes in youth and children's work, then email info at gracepoint.co.za or WhatsApp us on 071-892-9382. It's happening. Our last Closer Worship experience for 2022. You don't want to miss this one. Come and join us tonight at 6pm. It will be an experience like no other. See you there at 6pm. Sharp. We also have an exciting announcement. On the evening of 27 November, we have an amazing worship concert happening at Grace Point. All the way from the USA, Judah Productions presents Sink You Cooler and the Peace Troop on the Peace Tour. Save the date and look out for more updates in the weeks to come. Good morning, Grace Point. I extend my greeting to that of Julie and Angela. It is always such a joy and a privilege that I share with you a message from Scripture. And today we are talking about our special abilities and how we can use those for God's purposes. And so we read from Ephesians chapter 2, just one verse, and that is verse 10. For we are God's handiwork created in Christ Jesus to do good works, which God prepared in advance for us to do. Thanks be to God for God's word. Amen. 
Now, I want to start off by saying we, we have all been uniquely shaped by God to serve in ministry. And your shape determines your ministry. I am convinced that every person sitting here and watching the service online is a dream of God. And I believe God designed and created you with a special ability or abilities. You are not an accident. You were made on purpose. And that purpose, that dream God has for you is ingrained in who you are. Each one of us is a unique combination of spiritual gifts, of natural abilities, of skills, of talents, of life experiences, a combination of personality and passions. God put all these two things together to make you a distinctive masterpiece. You are something special to God, God's handiwork. We are a work of art made to do something good which God had planned in advance for us to do. And so if you look around you, you will notice we are all different. We are shaped differently. And inside these remarkable and different designs are a variety of special abilities. Here in the sanctuary online, there are hundreds, if not thousands, of abilities. Some have a very pleasant, welcoming ability. They convey warmth, making others feel at ease, feel comfortable, comes naturally for them. Whereas others have a spectacular musical ability. It's like when they were born, they cried in a perfect pitch. And we will experience more of this later on in the evening as we gather together for worship at Closer. Some have an exceptional counseling ability. They are unparalleled when it comes to listening, when it comes to encouraging and guiding with sensitivity. And so much as we are all different, common to us all is that we are all capacitated with an ability to do something good. And, and that's our special design. God has made each one of us with certain abilities. And so where God has given you an ability, excel in that ability. Excel in that ability. Be you and nothing else. And so here's a few takeouts to cogitate on this passage that we have read, or this title specifically that we're dealing with today. First is that understand your ability. Understand your ability. I shared two weeks ago that at our moment of conversion, we receive the Holy Spirit, and with the Holy Spirit, we receive spiritual gifts. And so spiritual gifts are received from the power of the Holy Spirit. On the other hand, our abilities are also God-given. They, they, they are further a part of our physical package. They result from our genetic code and training. Now, I must mention this as a side note, that there are spiritual gifts and natural abilities that overlap, like teaching and leadership. They can both be a spiritual gift and a natural ability. Now, that's a side note. We can't invest much time defining what we have. Instead, we praise God for what we have and we use it for God's glory because in the final analysis, whether it's a spiritual gift or a natural ability, both come from God and are to be used for God. But what we are to appreciate is that every ability is given by God. And so as we have seen in our text, God has designed and created you as a masterpiece with a purpose in mind with specific things that God wants you to do. Special abilities that result not necessarily from your genetic code, but they are part 
of your divine design. God gave these abilities to you. Now listen to this example given to us in Exodus chapter 21. Then the Lord said to Moses, Look, I have specifically chosen Bezalel. And after giving description of who Bezalel is, the Lord goes on to say, I have filled him with the Spirit of God, giving him great wisdom, abilities, and expertise in all kinds of crafts. Now, this is against the backdrop of God having given Moses an instruction to build a tabernacle. And God gave Bezalel and a bunch of others various skills, abilities that were needed to build the tabernacle. And so where do these abilities come from? They come from God. Every ability comes from God, our creator. Listen to Deuteronomy 8, verse 18. But remember the Lord your God, for it is he who gives you the ability to produce wealth. So understand your ability as God-given so that you can in turn channel that ability into God's work. Whatever your special abilities, they are given to you by God, the God who designed you and created you for holy purposes. And so understand them as God-given and they are to be used for God's purposes. Secondly, dedicate your abilities to God. Dedicate your abilities to God. Every ability has a purpose and every ability is to be used for God. God did not waste any ability on you. You see, when we narrow our view of God's work to only that which happens in a church service on a Sunday morning or in the evening, only a few of the abilities we have will we use. But most of God's work does not happen within the walls of our sanctuary or in front of our screens if we're following the service online. We come here to church to get taught, to refocus, to recharge, so that we can go and do God's work in the world where we live all week. God's work happens in our homes, in our neighborhoods, in the workplace. It happens at schools. God's work happens all week long, and it happens through you and through me. God has strategically placed you and equipped you to do his work seven days a week, wherever you are, in any space that you occupy. So every ability is to be dedicated to God and used for God. Proverbs 16, verse 3 says, Commit to the Lord whatever you do, and your plans will succeed. And so, friends, every ability... I, I keep hammering this point. Every ability is to be used for the glory of God. If you are a mechanic, repair that car for the glory of God. If you are an accountant, balance those financial books for the glory of God. If you are going to prepare a Sunday meal, prepare that meal for the glory of God. Whatever you do, do it as if you are worshiping the living God. Do it with all your heart for the Lord. And, and when you know you have an ability, dedicate it to God, consecrate it to God. Let it be set aside for God's purposes. Uh, because when we dedicate our ability to God, we are sure to use it for the right purpose. I mean, you can have an ability to organize. But I want to argue that if that ability is not dedicated to the Lord, it stands the risk of being used to organize crime and corruption. You can have an ability to influence people, but if that ability is not dedicated to the Lord, it has the potential to influence people for evil instead of influencing for good. And so God gave you the abilities you have. Dedicate them 
to the Lord. Use them for their God intended purposes. And finally, synchronize, harmonize your abilities with your life purpose. As we saw in the past few weeks, God matches our spiritual gifts with our function in the body of Christ. It's the same with our natural abilities. God has created you for good works, and God has equipped you with abilities to do the good work. He has given us, each one of us, an assignment. And with that assignment, God has equipped us to succeed. You see, when the Lord commands, the Lord also provides. When, when the Lord sends, the Lord also empowers. God gave you abilities for a reason. And the more you know what God has given you, the better you will use it for the God who gave it to you. The more you'll be able to live out God's dream that is placed in you. And so God has equipped you with everything you need to do good. And, and I want to give this suggestion for consideration on how we can make the most of our special abilities as we match them with our purpose. One, I want to suggest that assess your abilities. With this, I want to go back to, to verse 3 of Romans 12, which we dealt with two weeks ago. Think of yourself with sober judgment in accordance with the faith God has distributed to each of you. In other words, have a sane estimate of your abilities. And here's how we can assess our abilities. One, take stock. Take an inventory of your abilities. There are abilities, inventories, or tests that you can take, but also you can do something as simple as listing those things that you enjoy doing, those things that you know for sure that you are good at. We are told that an average person has at least 500 abilities, and so you have more than you think you do. Use that ability. Make a list. B, evaluate your experience. Evaluate your experience. What do you know for sure that you already do well? Sometimes there are things we do without even realizing that we have an ability in those areas. Things we take for granted. And so what are you already successful at? Evaluate your experience. Ask for feedback. You know, when you are good at something, people will notice it. And at times, others will identify in you abilities that you are not even aware of. Ask for feedback. And experiment. Try different things. Test. Discover. Get to know what you are good at. And, and this may be one of the most fun and accurate ways of discovering our abilities. But as you do all these things, please don't forget to have fun. Enjoy the experience. And so assess your abilities. Secondly, sharpen your abilities. We all know that abilities get better with practice. They get better when we make use of them. We know sports people, we know musicians, practice to improve their skills. And so practice, train, take lessons, get better, because sharpened abilities bring about success. There's no doubt about it. And, and then use your abilities. Use it or lose it. Use your abilities. You see, God's grace and God's gifts come in various forms. They come in natural abilities. They come in spiritual gifts. But whatever God has given you, use it to serve others. Ultimately, our lives 
our abilities, our, our gifts, all these things belong to God. They are entrusted unto us to be managed on God's behalf. And so take what God has given you and use it faithfully. Manage it for, on God's behalf. Now, we, we all know the, the parable of the talents. But Jesus tells a story of a man who entrusted his assets to three servants and went away for a very long time. After a while, he comes back, and when he returns, he needs an account of what the servants had done with the assets he had given them. The first two had invested and had good return to show for that. But the one had hid his talents in the ground, wanting to keep them safe. And listen to what the man said. Take the talents from him and give it to the one who has 10 talents. Because if you don't use it, what's the point of having it? Use it or lose it. And then I want to conclude with, with what Ian used as his introduction in last week's message, the example of the jigsaw puzzle. A thousand different pieces that make a picture. But each one, he said, is unique, irreplaceable, and necessary. And so we have pieces of a jigsaw puzzle here in these two stations. And in a moment, I am going to invite you to come and take a piece. And that for the next few weeks, as we go on through this sermon series, you prayerfully consider where you fit in, in this piece of the puzzle that is God's work here at Grace Point. On the final Sunday of the series, the last Sunday of the month, as a response, we will bring back these, these pieces as, 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 as a way of reconsecrating ourselves to the work to which God has called us. And so I'll invite the worship music team to come forward prayerfully. You can take a piece, one or two. There is enough for everybody. Keep them safe. Prayerfully consider where you fit in, in this piece of the puzzle that is God's story here at Grace Point. Shall we do that? As and when you are ready, just come forward, take a piece, and return to your seat.
Equally for those joining the service online, if you may just find time to get a puzzle, take one piece and do as those of us here in the sanctuary have done. Keep it safe, pray, meditate, consider where you fit in in this puzzle. And then I want to close off by reading a piece whose author I don't know, but it's titled, I Am Special. My sister used to have this in her room when we were growing up, and it just struck. And so prayerfully, as we meditate, I will read this piece. In all the world, there is nobody like me. Since the beginning of time, there has never been another person like me. Nobody smiles like I do, has my eyes, my nose, my hair, my hands, my voice. In all time, there has been no one who laughs like me, cries like me. And what makes me laugh and cry will never provoke identical laughter and tears from anybody else. I am the only one in all of creation who has my set of abilities. There will always be somebody who has a better, who is better at one of the things I am good at, but no one in the universe can reach the quality of my combination of talents, ideas, abilities, and feelings. No one will ever look, talk, walk, think, or do like me. I am special, rare, and there is great value in me. God has given me my value. I need not attempt to imitate others. I will accept and celebrate my God-given differences. It is no accident that I am special. God made me for a purpose and has a work for me that no one else can do as well as me. Only one applicant for my job is qualified. That one is me. I am special because God made me special. Shall we all stand as we sing together our final worshiping song? But that's how you learn It's nothing short of a miracle I'm here Not thinking over and it doesn't add up I know it comes from above I've got miracles of miracles A million little miracles Miracles are miracles, count your miracles, one, two, three, four, I can't even count them all. You held me steady so I wouldn't give up, you opened doors that nobody could shut. I hope I'll never get over what you've done I want to live with an open heart And I want to live like I know who you are I hope I'll never get over what you've done 
last worship evening uh, for the year. It's called Closer. If you'd like to come through, uh, please come through. It's going to be a really beautiful time. If you haven't been to a Closer worship experience before, uh, I want to tell you, you are missing out on something really, really beautiful and meaningful. Uh, we sit up in the middle of the sanctuary. Everyone is in like a circle and it's just a completely different experience. And it's a space to just be honest with God, to be open. Uh, you're not going to be forced to do anything you don't want to do. Uh, but please consider coming through later today at six o'clock. Also, I want to say uh, to my beautiful wife, uh, you did a really good, great job. <laughs> <laughs> I am particularly grateful for the work God is doing in this community. I sense the spirit is at work here and, and, and we've got to be in sync with what the spirit is doing. And so let us receive the blessing from God. Now may the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all now and always. Amen. Be blessed.